attendance today. Uh, welcome to the Chamber of Commerce Candidate Forum. Uh, we're going to have two forums today, uh, one for the uh, Columbia Public School District and the other one for the Board of Trustees of the hospital. We're going to start with the school district. Uh, my name is Joe Henderson with uh, Central Bank of Boone County. I'm the co-chair of the Government Affairs Committee. My other co-chair is Heather Hargrove. Uh, she'll be uh, moderating the second half of our uh, forum today. If you would, I'd like to go over uh, some of the rules uh, that we'll be uh, using today. But before we do that, let me introduce our candidates for the Board of Education. Start down this end, Helen Wade, Paul Cushing, Jonathan Sessions, and Robin Dianix. Thank you all for being here. As you can see, uh, we'll be live streaming this and recording this today's forum uh, and uploading this to the Chamber's website. And this will also be shared with members of the community on social media. But before I begin, let's talk about the, the format that we'll use today. Each candidate will be given one minute to introduce themselves in a few minutes. And then each candidate will then respond to a series of questions uh, that the chamber is prepared. Each candidate will be allowed one minute to respond to those questions. We do have a timekeeper <coughs> in front that will be sharing where you're at from a timing perspective. And then following the chamber questions, we will open it up uh, for audience questions if time allows. Each candidate will then be given 30 seconds for closing remarks before we uh, end this part of the forum. As long as all of you understand uh, the format, we'll go ahead and begin the forum, if that's okay. Today, uh, we're going to start with Robin, if you don't mind, we'll start sure. this end. And here's our first question. As the city and county look forward to additional economic development projects, what are your views on Chapter 100 bonds? Oh, well, you know what, before I do that, I didn't allow you guys to introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> My mistake. I wanted to get right into it. That's good, though. We've got to look at the look. That's a big one. I don't know the question yeah, yeah, so you can think about that. Yeah, there you go. So, Robin, why don't you take a minute and introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Robin Dianix. I am a parent. Um, I decided to run for school board because I was getting a little frustrated with how things were panning out as far as decisions that were coming down the pipe. Um, I am a, very much of an advocate for smaller class sizes, and if we can't do smaller class sizes, um, I am for adding a teacher's aide or a paraprofessional to help the teachers with their overcrowding issues. Uh, I'm also an advocate for um, emotional, social, behavioral health. I think it's very important that we equip our teachers as well as our parents and our students to know and identify things that are happening and to give them more support in that area. Um, and the third thing is I am uh, a huge advocate for uh, better communication. I'd like to be able to have you reach out to me and be able to respond back to you. Uh, I will be sitting in um, teachers' classrooms, listening, hearing what's going on, not just waiting for somebody to respond to me. Um, I've been at PTA meetings listening to parents as well, um, and so that's my big goal. Thank you, Robin. Jonathan? Uh, good afternoon. I'm Jonathan Sessions. I grew up here in Columbia, uh, third generation, Boone Countyan. Many of you might know my grandfather, Bob Brock. Hopefully none of you know my grandmother, Margaret Brock, who taught at Oakland High School, or Oakland Junior High. Um, uh, I grew up in the Columbia Public Schools. I spent my entire K-12 career in the Columbia Public Schools. After that, I went, earned a degree at the University of Missouri, Columbia, where I started my first small business, which has grown into the business that it is today, just a couple blocks away from here. Uh, I am a member of the Chamber of Commerce, been active in many chamber committees, including Kickball of Palooza, which was ended immediately after myself and my treasurer, Craig Brumfeld, being the co-chairs. I think it might have had something to do with a um, liability waiver. <laughs> um, so, uh, why? Well, that's that's my one minute. So you get to know a little bit about me. Um, you'll get to know a little bit about why I'm running to continue to support the Columbia Public Schools through our question. Thanks, Jonathan. Paul, I'm going to read a little because I want to get it done. I'm running. 
running for re-election. I've been on the board for uh, my first full three-year term. This will be my third election, actually. But I'll tell you why I'm running. First, I enjoy the work. It's rewarding. I feel I'm doing something positive for our community. I want to affect change. I want Columbia Public Schools to continue on the path to being the best school district in the state. In addition to academics, the achievement gap and work to con consistently improve student test scores, I like to focus on prudent financial management budgeting, and I like to ask a lot of questions, um, <coughs> a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. uh, good probably a, all good questions. Not all good. <laughs> uh, finally, um, I finished my first full term, so I think that I would, I would be good to you know, be there for a second one, uh, because I know some stuff, not everything. As a fiscal conservative, I would, oh my goodness, this, that, that went so fast. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> By the way, you can't finish your statement. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's a fast memory. Well, we've gotten used to it. It's just, you know, you're done. <laughs> Very yeah, the other obedient. Yeah, they were. And Helen, would you like to introduce yourself? I would be glad to. Um, for those of you I haven't met yet, my name is Helen Wade. Um, I am a family law attorney and practice family law here in town, and I have for the past 13 years. Um, I am seeking a third term on the Columbia Public Schools Board of Education. I've been very honored to have served all of you for the last six years. I'm seeking your vote for um, an opportunity to serve this third term because there is a lot of work left to do with Columbia Public Schools. Um, as Mr. Cushing said, um, it is our objective to be the best district in this state, and we have made lots of decisions and lots of headway um, in terms of being meeting that goal. I, we've made some promises um, in the last year or so to all of you as voters <coughs> with respect to what we're going to do with your money that you generously gave to this district last year. Um, I want to be around to fulfill those promises and keep the ones that we've made. Lastly, I am a firm believer that the strength of our public schools is a driver of our economic success. Um, it's not just for the students and the parents and the grandparents, it's for every single one of us. And I want to be a part of the continued strength of our schools. Thanks for having us. Thank you, candidates. And now we'll get to the questions. Uh, there are three questions today. Uh, the first one I'll repeat again for you. As the city and county look forward to additional economic development projects, what are your views on Chapter 100 bonds? Robin? Sure. I just want to make sure I understand what a Chapter 100 bond is, since I'm a newbie. Um, that is when we are giving uh, money to a company to come here? Correct. Okay. I am for that. Um, I, I believe that we need to bring more businesses here to Columbia. Um, we need to have better income stable jobs that are being brought. Uh, I think that we are doing a better job with the checks along the way um, with this dairy that has come about. It seems we learned a lot of lessons from IBM and so I'm hoping going forward that when we are issuing money that we'll be able to have a checks and balances similar to that. Okay, thank you very much. Jonathan, would you like me to report? Uh, no, I got it. Okay. Like all tax incentives, we need to make sure as a entity that is a steward of your tax dollars that we are making prudent decisions. And the impact to the school district is not the same to every other entity. So when we look at a Chapter 100 bond, obviously a, the Board of Education is going to look at that Chapter 100 bond at a project level, and we're going to look at it how it impacts the tax dollars, which in this case are property, property taxes, and how that's going to impact the Columbia Public Schools. In the past two Chapter 100 bonds, we've had a couple that are on the table right now. Um, both of the, those have been, from my perspective, great Chapter 100 projects. That's not to say that there might not be a Chapter 100 project that we have concerns about, um, but it's our job to sit there and ask the questions of, of the entity seeking that Chapter 100 bond. So when it comes down to it, it's, for me, it's a project by project assessment. Jonathan, thank you. Paul, what is your view of the use of Chapter 100 bonds for economic development? I think it's been amazing. I think it's bringing in money that we wouldn't have any other uh, otherwise. I think that uh, what Reedy's doing is is difficult work, um, and, and, and 
and work that's important to the community. Um, you know, one of the important things for any community is the diversity in business and jobs. Uh, we have a large university um, that, that powers a lot of our economy, but um, we certainly need other jobs. I came here for a job at North Professional Imaging, um, and, and um, so I understand that. Um, as far as trusting the process, I'm, I feel that uh, what we have in place is excellent. I, I trust Mr. Griggs. Um, I just had a conversation with him briefly about it, his work, and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I think that it's, it's, it's important for us to continue to move forward in this way and bring in more jobs for the community and more tax revenue. So, you know, plenty of public schools. That's it. Thank you, Paul. Ellen, what would be your perspective about the use of Chapter 100 bonds? I think it's um, an invaluable tool to drive positive economic developments in the community. Um, and it's one of many tools that we have to um, ensure that the people who live in this um, area have living wage jobs with benefits. Um, I agree fully with what Jonathan articulated quite well. Um, which is that it is a project-by-project project basis. Um, Mr. Griggs has done a very good job um, of presenting us with the facts and figures that we need to evaluate whether or not the projects that are being proposed actually bring a level of benefit to the school district. Um, you know, we, can get, we look at what's the before and what's the after, assuming that the uh, proposed development project does what it's supposed to do. Um, as uh, as where, from where we sit, we want to see an increase in the funding that's available to Columbia Public Schools and a uh, reasonably verifiable and fulfillable promise being made in exchange for those payments. So um, I am in favor of them as one of the tools to use to encourage that growth for us. Thank you very much. This next question, we'll start with Jonathan. Mm -hmm. As the state continues to trend towards further budget cuts in K-12 through what do you see as the top priorities for Columbia Public Schools? This is the most cheerful chime telling you we're done. I very much enjoy that. It's always for me to come along. Uh, when it comes to state revenues, the state continues to play um, play a little game with its constituents. Our legislators continue to look for ways to cut funding in public education outside of the foundation formula, such as transportation while saying, oh, yeah, but we fully funded the foundation formula. Fully funding the foundation formula by, say, uh, key I owe you $20, I'm going to give you 10 and I'm going to call it fully paid, and you're going to be happy about it, and then I'm simultaneously going to not pay this other debt that I owe to you. Um, that's not fully funding public education. Uh, they're, they're playing a trick on, on the constituents and the community. When they cut transportation and say they're fully funding the foundation formula, where do they think the money that they're cutting is going to come from? As uh, school board members, we need to continue to work with, and in some cases fight, our legislators to make sure that they realize that public education is the number one thing after our debt in our state constitution that we should be funding. Thank you very much. Paul, what do you see as the top priorities for Columbia Public Schools in light of the budget cuts at the state level? Well, I think we, uh, we do very well. Uh, we have a great team at Columbia Public Schools with Linda Quinley and the rest of the administration as far as uh, budgeting and the, the process of doing so. Uh, that said, um, test scores are, are, are becoming more important to me. We've been in a mode of building new schools to eliminate overcrowding, get rid of trailers, that, that whole thing. And we're kind of coming to the end of that 10-year uh, plan. And um, I think that, in my opinion, I'd like to see more work being done, and it is being done. Dr. Siebel is doing a great job, in my opinion, uh, of working on increasing our test scores. So really the focus for me would be that. Um, CPS is also doing a great job uh, to work to reduce waste and unnecessary spending so that we can bolster the budget in the times when the state is uh, continuously dropping funding and um, Uh, they continue to uh, push unfunded mandates on school districts throughout the state. Uh, so. Thank you, Paul. Ellen, what do you see as the top priorities for Columbia Public Schools in light of the budget cuts at the state level? Um, not only are we facing potential cuts at the state level, it's, it's at the federal level as well. I mean, they, you can't say with a uh, sharp enough edge that these are uncertain times in public education. 
Um, in light of that fact, I think the very first priority for us as a board and us as a district is to ensure that our budgeting is as on target as it possibly can be and that we're transparent with the, our voters and our stakeholders with regard to what we're doing with taxpayer dollars and that we are as transparent as possible with our plans for the future, both close at hand and, and on a long range basis. Um, I think a second and equally high priority is to keep up with growth um, in our community. It is happening, we all know it. Um, we have to keep up with that growth from a programmatic standpoint and maintenance of student achievement and from a facilities standpoint in terms of the places in which our students go to learn. Third, I think a, a strong priority is to recruit and retain high quality teachers to ensure that the programs that we deliver in the facilities we maintain are absolutely top notch. Thank you very much. And Robin, what do you see as the top priorities going forward for Columbia Public Schools? Uh, to make our schools more competitive, um, in light of the things that are happening, the uncertainty over the next three years of what's happening um, from the federal <coughs> level down, uh, there are a lot of people that say, I really believe that we should have vouchers to give parents more choice. Um, I don't fully agree with that. Um, I think it's important that our schools are competitive so our parents want to send our kids there. Um, and in a lot of ways, that's not happening. Um, so I would want to be investing in that. Also finding new modes of revenue for our school. Um, just because the state and the federal government isn't giving out the money anymore, we can be creative in finding new ways to generate revenue for our schools. I don't have all the answers, but I'm very interested in finding new answers and, and looking for, for them. Um, I also am a big advocate for mastery of curriculum, not necessarily test scores. I think teachers do a wonderful job, um, but if we were to focus a little bit more on the mastery, um, a lot of our kids would get so left behind if they just didn't get um, one of the components right. And then the teacher had to move on to the next thing that was in the curriculum because, well, we have to. Um, if we spent a little bit more time on mastery, that would help make us a little more um, competitive. Thank you very much. Candidates, this is our last question. Paul, I'll let you start with this. Uh, the Achievement or Opportunity Gap has long been a goal of the Board of Education. Um, what do you see as the biggest obstacle to actually making progress and closing this gap? Oh man, that's a tricky question. Um, I think uh, we have generational poverty. We have parents that, that don't take care of their children. Children come to school hungry, without clothes, um, shoes. You know, sometimes it's, um, it's incredibly depressing when you start hearing the stories from teachers of uh, you know, what, what kind of needs our, our kids in our district have. We, we also have a large contingent of homeless uh, kids and you know, a couple of hundred, um, and that's as best we can tell. So, you know, it's not just one thing. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a whole, um, you know, a whole a range of things that, that schools have been left to deal with, unfortunately. Um, a lot of societal issues um, end up at our schools, and um, we just have to deal with them as they come. And, that, and that's a challenge, budgetary-wise, and, you know, with our um, resources of teachers and, 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 and counselors and, and whatnot. So, I think we're doing a pretty good job, but there's more work to be done, and, and that's why I'm on it again. Thank you, Paul. Ellen, what do you see as the biggest obstacle to actually making progress and closing the opportunity? Um, and so, th this is referred to in, um, in lots of different ways, whether it's the achievement gap or the opportunity gap. Um, I think the biggest obstacle to its closure is the fact that it is so broad and so multifaceted. Um, from a district standpoint, um, many of the factors that contribute to the existence of and ultimate growth of the achievement gap are matters that occur outside of the school setting. And with resources that are ever more limited, it becomes more and more difficult for us to address what I refer to as that wraparound time that starts when the last bell rings all the way through until the first bell rings in the morning. Um, it takes resources to have homeschool communicators, to have outreach counselors, to have people who are trusted by the members of our community that are parents, guardians, or caregivers, pardon me, to our most vulnerable students that are most exposed to the risks and problems that the achievement gap and opportunity gap um, tends to create. 
Um, we do a lot in Columbia Public Schools to address this. We focus on it as a primary initiative. Um, that's not to say that there isn't ongoing work to be done, as Mr. Cushing pointed out. Um, I could go on about that for a long time, but I won't. <laughs> Thank you. Robin, what do you see as the, the biggest obstacle to actually closing the opportunity gap in the school district? Uh, like they all have said, it's a, um, it's a, a very big issue. Getting the kids excited about coming to school is really difficult when they have um, trauma that has happened at home or um, <coughs> abuse, physical or verbal abuse that has happened, um, mental abuse. To get them excited to come to school again, it takes an army of people. Um, I, I, you may or may not know this, but one in five kids are dealing with emotional, um, social, and behavioral health issues, and most of them are not diagnosed. And so a lot of times, they're dealing with all of these internal demons by themselves, not knowing what to do. And many times it comes out in acting out, not wanting to go to school, not wanting to take a test, not wanting to do X, Y, Z. Uh, one of the things that I would really like to see, because I don't see this so much as a uh, race issue, I see it more of an um, everybody issue. I'd like to see our Parents as Teachers program broadened um, to include K through 12, not just preschoolers, and I'll, I'll explain to you why. Um, I am a recipient of Parents as Teachers um, when my first son was born as a premature infant. Um, I did not know this, but I um, had postpartum depression and I had no idea. There was a time when I thought about taking my own life, and it was because of my parents as teachers, a uh, person that came to my home. She recognized signals and, and symptoms that I was having, and she said, hey, this is what's happening. Let's talk about this. And so I was strong enough then to be able to ask for help. It wouldn't have ever happened if I didn't have that person that came into my home that I trusted to be able to identify that. Um, Jonathan, you, you get to follow up. Uh, what do you see as the biggest obstacles to actually making progress uh, closing the opportunity gap? We could spend the rest of our lives having this conversation. So answering it in one minute is impossible. Um, every person up here has made um, very accurate, very important points. We don't, if we had a child walking into a classroom with a gaping wound in their arm, we wouldn't ask that child to sit down in the chair but we have children walking into our classrooms with the same level of mental health trauma, and we ask them to sit down and behave. Um, achievement, enrichment, and opportunity are our watchwords in the Columbia Public Schools, and all three of those elements work together to make sure that our students have an opportunity to succeed and be career and college ready, because it's not one or the other. You have to be ready for both. The military doesn't accept a GED anymore, and most people aren't aware of that. You have to be college and career ready. Uh, working to make sure that our district is not pay for play, that every student has a chance to participate in everything our district has to offer, no matter what their background, no matter the situation that they have at home, no matter what just happened in the hallway. Making sure that all of our students feel welcomed, have the support they need, and are engaged in learning is is the way that we're going to overcome the achievement or opportunity gap or, or, or whatever couple of words you use to describe a massive massive issue that we're facing as, as a community and, and as a nation. Thank you Jonathan. Uh, that's it for our prepared questions. Are there any questions from the audience that you'd like to give to the candidates? Come on. <laughs> really isn't a question, but I, this being the Chamber of Commerce members here need to know this. This group of people who are currently on the school board have worked very, very studiously and very diligently with Ray on several economic development projects, and frankly, we do our very best to take them projects that they greatly benefit from, but nonetheless, Jonathan is correct, there are some that we don't take them because they don't benefit from. But the important thing I want to say is in the last 18 months, they have been key players in bringing $360 million worth of investment to our community and either creating or preserving over 1,050 jobs in our community. And obviously, we should all 
we have to realize this. If a family has a living income, mom and dad work, the kids are going to be better cared for, the kids are going to be better prepared to go to school, etc. And I just want to thank the members of the Board of Education for their assistance in each project. Dave, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Anybody have a question you'd like to ask? Last week before the legislature again for spring break, I know in the headlines there was a lot of talk about charter schools and moving forward, I guess just from what I'm hearing, it looks likely that they will expand that statewide. Um, your thoughts on expansion of charter schools and how it would potentially impact PCS? Good question. Helen, why don't you start? Of course. Um, it, it could potentially be disastrous. I am not in favor of charter schools. Um, there is a common rhetoric about charter schools that they are a, uh, it is a school choice issue. That's not what this is. There is no data that supports the notion that charter schools positively impact student achievement. There have been 21, or I think 21 or 23, charter schools in St. Louis and Kansas City that have failed. There are, I think there are hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars that went to those schools and they failed. So, in my opinion, when you take public funding and you divert it to a privately managed institution that is not necessarily accredited, that is not accountable to voters because it is not managed by an elected board, you are doing a disservice to public education. You're, you're cutting the legs out from under it. I've said that before and I'll say it again. Here's how you fix issues in public education. You fund it. You don't divert the funds. Thank you, Helen. Robin, your sure. perspective on charter schools? Sure. Um, I can see both sides of it. Um, I can see the side that says the parent that wants the choice because their school is failing. Um, and they want to be able to take their child out, fight for that child, and give them a better education. Totally get that. The other side of it, though, is that for the $3,000 that the family is going to get, they're actually taking $8,000 from the Columbia Public School, and they're, that's why they're talking about it's gonna be gutted, because so much money is going to be hemorrhaging out. If, if indeed this does happen, um, I don't think anybody wants to see it happen, but I think we need to be prepared with a game plan of, if this happens, this is what we're going to do, and if this happens, this is what we're going to do. Thank you, Robert Jonathan. $620 million. That's the number. Six hundred and twenty. I looked. She looked it up. Six hundred. <laughs> sorry. I, she's talking. I'm like, ah, I don't have it. Six hundred and twenty million of your local, state, and federal dollars have gone into charter schools in the state of Missouri alone, whose doors have closed. When a charter school fails, it doesn't fail at the end of the year. Someone doesn't look at the test scores and say, okay, we need to figure out how to allocate it. It closes on a Tuesday, and those kids are left without a school, and they've received a poor education. And the data that does exist from states like Michigan and Florida show that charter schools fail. They are doing a massive disservice to our students, and they're being set up as this opportunity of building choice. And, school choice and what it is is it's an opportunity to undermine public education while truly providing a disservice to our students if we want students to succeed comes back to what miss wade said fund public education appropriately at the state level so communities like columbia that really love public education don't have to keep paying at the local level we should be funding it at the state all your perspective on charter schools? Well, I could, I'll just echo what, what everybody else pretty much has said, but it's a, a, it's a the big deal for me is, is the tax dollars. Um, as a, an entity, um, the Board of Education authorizes us to go to voters for levies. We did that last year. The voters approved the levy because they trust the Board of Education and what they're going to do with that money. Um, you know, we, we try to be good uh, stewards of all the dollars that we receive. Um, so I mean, we already talked about the money that's going to be diverted, if, should that happen. But I'd like to, to talk about a little bit. CPS already offers school choice in our Ridgeway um, school, um, and we have two lottery schools, Red and Sam and Expressive Arts. So parents already in Columbia have options if they want to move their, their 
younger children um, to a different school. Um, the other th final thing is the school is only good as its management. And all the charter schools so far have been managed by the University of Missouri or UMKC. Um, and a lot of them are failing. It's, I'm not blaming the university because they should be able to run a school as well as anybody. It's a challenge when you're not local and you're, and you're dealing with things that, that are out of your control. And that's why having our schools being controlled by our Board of Education and our administration, in my opinion, is the best way to go. Thank you very much. It's now time for closing statements. Each candidate will have 30 seconds to make a closing statement. Robin, why don't you start? Uh, I like people. I like people a lot. <laughs> um, I think technology is wonderful, but it doesn't replace a conversation with somebody. Um, I want to be able to sit across the table from you and be able to see how you are um, receiving the information that I'm giving. And I want you to be able to see how I'm receiving the information you're giving. Uh, it's important for us to be able to talk to each other and know what it is that the community is wanting. Uh, and I would appreciate your vote on April 4th. <laughs> okay, John. Uh, I'll ask also for your vote on April 4th. Um, I'm a lifelong Columbian. I love the Columbia Public Schools. I'm dedicated to Columbia Public Schools. The Columbia Public Schools is the fuel that powers the engine that is Columbia. The Columbia Public Schools are why doctors want to move to this community. Columbia Public Schools are why businesses even humor the idea of asking us for a tax incentive. Because they look at the Columbia Public Schools and they say, wow, you, you don't have private schools to the level of the east and the west coast. Your public schools have 99% of the students that are, can go to public schools, go to your public schools because they are that good and they are known throughout the state of being that good. I want to continue to make sure that Columbia Public Schools, I'm sorry I'm going over, I, I want to continue to make sure that Columbia Public Schools is what people look to to say, like, we don't need charters, we don't need vouchers. The Columbia Public Schools do it right, and they keep doing it better. Thank you, Jonathan. Paul? I'm a vocational school graduate, a lifelong learner, um, and I've received additional training as I've navig navigated the workforce. I think that gives me a slightly different perspective and brings a fresh outlook to the board. <coughs> it is also the reason why I'm a champion for vocational education. Um, I would like to continue work in our vocational areas to champion that, uh, to find uh, potential um, mentorships, partnerships for our, our kids if they so choose to, to do that. Um, I would like your vote, please. Um, and you know, I'm gonna say one more thing. It's a privilege to sit here with, with the other candidates. Um, they're all awesome. And it's, for me, um, I, I just feel that, um, you know, it's just a, a great place to be. Thank you, Paul. Hello? <laughs> it does go fast. Um, my name is Helen Wade. Uh, I would ask for your vote on. That's right. Um, Columbia Public Schools is the backbone of this community. I've served on the board for six years, and over the with those six years of experience, and the fact that I I'm a pretty analytical person, I have extensive experience in dealing with families, conflict, and conflict resolution. Um, I think that I am well positioned to serve the community on that, this Board of Education in some very uncertain upcoming times. If you have any more questions, please feel free to email me, call me, ask me, stop by my office, it's over there. <laughs> Candidates, I want to thank you for your perspective today on the issues. Would we give them a round of applause? take a short break uh, for the next session and I'll turn this over to Heather Hargrove, my co-chair. Thank you.
Bible waiting on you. opportunity to speak here about my vision for our hospital and our future. Um, for Boone Hospital, our community is at a critical juncture. We're facing a generational decision with our board of trustees who's going to operate our hospital for the foreseeable future. I'm running for trustee because I believe that fundamentally the work that lies ahead for our hospital is a future and long-term endeavor. We're not talking about small choices in the year ahead, we're talking about a generational decision. I ask for your support because I'm the only candidate committed to leading with Boone Hospital beyond the next 12 months. My vision for our hospital and our future is about local control of our local hospital. We're doing a disservice to this community when we send $15 million per year to the St. Louis economy. With, uh, those are jobs, those are referrals, and those are services that belong here, deserve to be reinvested with Boone Countyans. My own background is in healthcare policy, 10 years experience in finance and logistics. I worked for the U.S. Congress on the Medicare subcommittee, as well as the Missouri State Senate with 10 years in the U.S. Navy, both active duty and the reserves. Thanks. I'm Rick Shanker. Uh, Mr. Taylor here has stole some of my thunder. The primary reason I'm running for Boone Hospital trustees is to represent the citizens of Boone County who think the lease for Boone Hospital can and should be held by the people of Boone County and not another entity. Several leaders in our community have suggested that we become a major medical destination in the Midwest. If that is so, then surely we can find talented individuals who can run Boone Hospital for us at a profit. The second reason I'm running is to assure the competition in our market. I think that we should not be aligned with any other entity, that Boone should stand by itself. In regards to the university, the university has influences that Boone doesn't have political left, political right, and they could dictate certain policies, and I don't think we want to incorporate that into our 
in our uh, food hospital. My third platform is uh, going to have to wait till the end because I'm out of time. <laughs> Having only one minute, instead of telling you about the hospital, I'm going to tell you about me. Uh, my education, I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Finance from the University of Missouri. I also studied management at Indiana University in South Bend. Military service, I am a Vietnam veteran. I received multiple bronze stars while serving in Vietnam, as well as a Purple Heart and the Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry. I left the Army as a captain. Work experience. I spent 42 years with one employer here in town, Columbia Insurance Group. My first job was as the mail clerk. My final job was as CEO and uh, chairman of the board. I've always believed in community service. Some of my past holdings in the community, I was chair of the board of the Chamber of Commerce, two terms as vice chair already, founding board member of the Community Foundation of Mid-Missouri, United Way Board, John Point, Finance Advisory Board at the University of Missouri, uh, eight years as treasurer of Boone Hospital Center. Married 51 years, one wife, two children, <laughs> three grandchildren, two dogs, one Conyer. Uh, howdy, folks. Um, I'm going to skip over my introduction. I figure most of you already know who I am, this being a pretty savvy group. Um, and move on to the three things or my objectives for this particular race. The first one is to address transparency. Um, the board has a uh, reputation, either deserved or not, for being secretive. I think I can help address that. The second is to bring a new face to the board. Again, the board has a reputation for being somewhat inbred. I think I can address that. But the third one, the most important one, is what I call the dream. The dream is to take all the disparate parts of a very impressive health complex here, the hospitals, the pharmacies, the clinics, and pull them into one whole, supplemented by the various businesses that cater to this, and create an entity that can serve as the destination of choice for Missourians uh, who have health problems. Now this is not a new dream, this is an old dream, it's being worked on. Uh, Mayor Treese has called together a uh, committee to address this, but I think I can bring more to this particular goal. Thank you. Okay, I am Randy Morrow, and I did have the privilege of working at Boone Hospital <coughs> for 38 years. I retired as the Chief Financial Officer and the Chief Operating Officer, and I truly believe that experience does make a difference. Uh, I pledge to you that I will use that experience and my financial knowledge to represent you, the citizens of Boone County. I will pledge to work with the other Board of Trustees, the County Commission, to set the course for the future of Boone Hospital Center, and that it will remain strong, both financially and clinically, so it can continue to provide the service that this community deserves, and I pledge that we will continue to have this excellent health care within this community. Okay, gentlemen, I think you're going to like the questions we have been We each started to expand on some of them, and you'll have another minute to do that. So the first question we're going to ask today, and Richard, we'll start with you. No. Yeah. Well, I'm going to skip you. No. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, the first question is, is uh, might seem quite simple, but why are you seeking this office? Uh, I'm seeking the office because of my first premise, and that is there are people here in Boone, in Boone County, that want uh, to retain the ownership. After doing some research, I realized, and thanks to Mr. Taylor here, he's informed me that we're sending a lot of money to BJC. Originally, when we were approached to farm this out, uh, there were reasons why that don't exist as they do today. A lot of the features that BJC offers us, and probably any other entity, are now subbed out to other uh, um, subcontractors, subcontractors like records and uh, IT departments. I still have more time. That's it. Well, I guess you'd say I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> I really believed when I ran for office, it's a five year term that's concluding now that this would end my service to the board. But it's been alluded to, we have a major, major decision on the table right now. We've been involved in hundreds of hours with discussions, interviews, conference calls, planning, strategies. Uh, and I just feel like that I'm right in the middle of something, and 
if I didn't stay with it now, I'd be quitting in the middle of the job. And that's not me. Some of the things I gave you in my background give you some idea of how I finish things. We've been finishing jobs that we started. Uh, I was, I'm volunteering at this point in time to finish this job, which has been alluded to, really will shape the future of the hospital. At my age, I'm not looking for a career in politics. <laughs> <laughs> and I have plenty of money uh, for um, my needs. Um, I have um, always been a public servant. I'm very proud to be a physician. I never intended to be a politician, but I got cast into that role years ago. Um, and um, as they say, when uh, one door closes, another one opens. And people have looked to me over the years for leadership in addressing the medical problems that have confronted us both nationally but also locally. Um, the issues regarding Boone Hospital, particularly its interaction with the uh, University of Missouri, have been ones I've faced before. I think I can help address those uh, issues. I think I can make the hospital stronger. I love Boone County in Columbia. My wife was born here. I raised my children here. I've lived here since 88. I want very much to do something good for the county. As I previously said, I uh, worked at Boone for 38 years, and every day for 38 years, I tried to make Boone a better place to work and a better place to receive health care. And I will commit to spend my time and my energy and my experience to help Boone Hospital continue to be the hospital that it is <coughs> in the future. This community has been very good to me and my family, and I'm willing to give of my time to help continue to make this a great community to live. We are very, very fortunate that we have the health care that we do today in Columbia. And it's not just because it just happens. It takes a lot of hard work. And I, I am willing to work with my fellow trustees and make that happen. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said in the beginning, I, I think that what Boone Hospital is facing is a generational decision. Um, and I respect the people who put in the, the years and years of service on the board. But the citizens of Boone County also deserve to hear from a trustee next year. The seat that I'm running for will be up again next year. And the trustee that takes this seat will have a say in who's operating Boone Hospital. So I think that as a trustee, communicating to voters next year about what our decisions are, answering to people on how we came to that decision is important. Um, this is a hospital, the largest asset for our county. And people who have a stake in that are the voters and the business owners here who, uh, who make up this community. That's fundamentally why I'm running. I'll also be around for the long term. My, my sons are four and two. Um, we're going to use Boone Hospital uh, for decades to come. And I think this is a decision um, that's important we get right. And it's important that we have someone who can communicate how we got to that decision. Bob, we're going to start the second question with you, and it might be a little bit different but, um, uh, than it might be the other candidates. But the next question is, if you're elected, how do you intend to get up to speed on the intense contract negotiation and the process of, of where it's at um, and for how long it's been going on? Well, I believe I'm there right now. <laughs> that is an advantage I have, unfortunately, with the other candidates. Uh, I have been involved in every discussion, all the planning sessions, all the meetings, all the interviews. I feel like that's what I'm doing now, is bringing that expertise and that experience to the table to make sure that this decision is the right one. I can almost guarantee you that no matter what the decision is, everybody's not gonna be happy. I hope that we can do the right thing for the long term, for the future of the hospital and for Boone County. Um. I'm an educator. If you're going to be an educator, you have to be a self-educator because you often end up in places that uh, you don't know very much about. And since I've not been part of this process and my skills and experience have been in medicine uh, rather than hospital negotiations, I would have a lot of catch-up to do. I am retired, so I would be able to invest the time in going through documents, um, going through uh, whatever has been generated so far, and I probably make a pest of myself for the fellow uh, members of the board to find out where they stand, as well as uh, Mr. Snyder, who's the attorney. Okay, well, I would start April 5th, and uh, it would continue. But I do feel one of my strengths. I do know 
most of our employees. I know our medical staff. And I always look at, I put the patient first. Whatever we do, let's always put the patient first. And then I see the patient, the employees, and the medical staff. And we can do that triangle together. And what's best for the patients, everything else falls in place. So I will start immediately looking at all of the options with them in mind of how can we improve patient care at Boone Hospital Center. Um, so this is an area where I argued at the last forum that we had an opportunity to bring the community up to speed on what our options are. I've actually, um, I've also reached out privately and said as a candidate, I would like to be up to speed so that April 4th, April 5th comes around. We as candidates, non-incumbents, aren't caught flat-footed. The reality is that my background, 10 years in the Navy, um, you learn to make quick decisions with a short amount of time, but you have to make the right decisions. And so... Um, I don't think the board is on a one-week time frame after April 5th. I think the board uh, should allow new trustees the opportunity to be well-versed in that. And then also, everyone up here has been very gracious and said that whatever uh, information, whatever resources they have available, whomever wins in our two races, uh, will have their support uh, to be able to make a well-informed decision that's the best one for all Boone County. And I, I take everyone at their word. I think that that's the right way for us to run a campaign uh, amongst leaders in our community. I'm not up to speed. I'll be the first to admit it. I'm going to have a big learning curve. If the if it is said that we're going to use another entity as the runner as the, uh, the to run Boone Hospital, then a lot of our duties I think are going to be mute. Um, having said that, um, I just don't understand why, in regards to transparency, that the trustees have agreed to not letting any information out. I understand negotiations, but I still don't understand why we aren't being uh, blessed with the information as who's in the running for this. So I would ask the other board members if I was going to be elected if I'm subject to those same rules. Uh, our third question today, um, what would your thoughts be on a merger with NU Health? Gordon, we'll start with you. Um, if you mean merger by meaning that uh, MU Health basically takes over the hospital uh, in all respects, uh, I don't think that's great. I think the two institutions need to maintain institutional independence, uh, um, and that's primarily through the medical staff. If you say that um, Boone Hospital and MU Health with um, other entities perhaps, but certainly those two, should work closely to avoid duplication of services or duplication of waste services and should work to promote services that each one of them has that particularly excels in, then yes, I'm all in favor of that. Uh, to accomplish that though, you're gonna have to achieve something very important and that is you're gonna have to convince both institutions that it's best to work together as opposed to work against the other one. And so far we've had a history of the two working against each other. There are, there are different forms of mergers and I think what we need to do to start with with the university is to look how can we collaborate? How can we work together? How can we work together to eliminate duplication, reduce some costs? And one of the examples I like to give is both institutions have excellent oncology programs. But by it themselves, they, they, there's not enough populations on, in both camps to be able to bring in some subspecialists that can take to the next level of oncology care. So we have to send those patients to St. Louis, Kansas City, MD Anderson, Mayo Clinic. If we can have a free flow of patients and, the, and sharing of the patients, then we would have enough volume to present with recruiting physicians that can be the sub-subspecialists and that would provide care in this community where we would not have to leave. So that would be one of my goals, is to see if we can collaborate first with the university to provide care that currently is not available. Um, this is the conversation that I have most often when I talk to people going door to door, or business leaders or physician groups that, that I've chatted with. Um, it's not an easy 60 second answer, but, but the reality is this. We need to collaborate more. I think most of our trusted, or the candidates here have discussed this in, in the past forums and uh, with media and so on. 
Um, the reality is we should take every opportunity to leverage the power of MU and the state government, their contracting power, support services, stuff like that, to really drive down healthcare costs here in Boone County. The other thing that people are concerned about, though, is patient choice. What are our healthcare choices? Any relationship with MU has to preserve the opportunity for Boone Countyans to choose a physician to provide them the care, the level of care that they want and expect uh, at, at, at Boone Hospital. So that's uh, without knowing the proposals, without knowing what's in front of us, the trustees have to provide the best return to Boone Countyans. We have a financial responsibility, but also protecting healthcare choice. I'm going to go into my second reason, which I didn't have enough time to read, but I think I do now. The second reason I'm running is to assure competition in our market. Alphabetically, whether you're an administrator, a cook, a janitor, in maintenance, a nurse, a physician, or a technician, or any kind of worker, competition is opportunity for all employees to seek the best choices for themselves and their families. To entirely join the two hospital entities, one of which is highly influenced by state politics and funding, not only reduces our workers' choice, but reduces patients' opportunities. Having said that, I'm confident that due to the nature of medical research and scholarly pursuits, both methods and procedures will be shared. Furthermore, the university has a system that is not currently compatible, per se, with BJC, and there have to be a mesh of those two groups. There's other reasons, but I think they should be definitely separate. Some of the economies that we're talking about here are achieved through a lot of partners. I mean, there are a lot of the things that you describe that uh, partnership with UMC could be achieved with other partners as well. But here's where we're at. One end that we got total independence, standing by yourself. On this end, we got total alignment with the university. Now, neither of those really seem to make sense to me. It seems to me like as we go down the road, we certainly can find things to work together on. But the solution is going to be somewhere here rather than either end. I think collaboration, it's ludicrous to think of all the resources that are available that we don't find ways to join forces to utilize some of those things here and make this a top medical destination. So I can see the future of a lot more collaboration, identifying different ways where that can be done to everyone's advantage. All right, our last prepared question is either all mentioned or alluded to, and as you know, Mayor Treese has appointed the Medical Tourism Task Force and made that a priority. Um, that task force has started to see a little bit of progress and strides towards their goals. Uh, what partnerships do you foresee needing to happen um, in order to make that work? Wendy, we'll start with you. Well, I mean, the two large institutions, but you also, the VA is an excellent facility. Um, you know, we've got a long-term care. Uh, we're going to have a psych hospital. So I think we need to bring all the parties together to start with. And I'm a firm believer that the community needs to be involved. Boone is the third or fourth largest employer in Boone County. So we need to reach out to the community. The community business needs to be behind this. The school systems, we've got an excellent school system. We need to promote that. So there's a lot of things we can do. The airport is a big issue to get if we want to bring patients in from out of state. So there's a lot, but we no one entity can do that by ourselves. We've got to do it as a community. I had a conversation earlier this week with a person who um, feels that the, the messaging that's going around that is sort of hokey, you know, medical tourism. When you're looking for health care, you're not a tourist. You're, you're someone serious in need of, of serious health care. And this physician felt, felt like in specific service lines for specific areas, hearts, oncology, orthopedics, we're already a destination medical center. People already come to Columbia for those things. As long as we don't have collaboration, though, uh, we will never be at the level of a Mayo Clinic or a Cleveland Clinic or UNC or name any prominent health system across the country. That's where fundamentally we have to figure out a way that we can collaborate with the Crosstown rival and with the VA, like uh, Randy pointed out, and really make uh, strong use of the brilliant physicians that we have here without undercutting each other. I've been told by some uh, people that Boone Hospital can't go alone, that we need to be part of a bigger conglomerate. And this is probably the same line that Anheuser-Busch gave to Flat Branch Brewery, Broadway Brewery, and Logbrook Brewery. Um, I think medical industry is changing. 
and there are vast possibilities, as you know, Congress is looking into a lot of different things. And finally, furthermore, having an outside entity <coughs> run our local hospital is like having Mizzou basketball team run by KU. We talked about all the entities that are involved here. There's other players out there. There are several very large and efficient and strong doctors groups. What are they? Doctors groups. I mean, they need to be part of this discussion as well. And they've got a big voice and they carry a pretty big stick. So I mean, it, it's very difficult. There's the opportunity here, if we're patient enough and smart enough and ambitious enough to bring together some of these entities. Uh, discussions have started. I mean, I think it's going to be better. When hey, the timetable is a little bit harder to kind of quantify. Let me take this um, uh, one step further because into an area we haven't talked about so far, and that is telemedicine. Um, telemedicine is using electronics to bring patients and physicians and caregivers out in the community in a rural setting into direct contact with uh, physicians here. Uh, at, um, in Columbia, uh, whether it's at Boone Hospital or MU. As it works out, uh, probably MU is actually the center of telemedicine worldwide in many respects. Karen Edison has taken the leadership on this for many years and is recognized as being the leader of this. There is nothing really stopping us from using the expertise in her contacts to develop telemedicine <coughs> as the glue that helps Healthcare in general throughout Missouri and also helps to build health care here in Columbia. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, I know we're running a little bit over, but I just wanted to, we have time for one question if anybody has one from the audience. Okay, very good. Well, then we will go ahead and go to uh, closing comments, and you have 30 seconds for each. And um, so thanks again, everyone, for being here. Uh, one thing that we didn't really touch on, and I think that maybe the, the last question could allude to it, um, trustees are the elected healthcare officials in this county. And if we're gonna have a vision of this community as a healthcare destination, the trustees have a responsibility to communicate that vision. I think that's something that I can bring to the table, uh, engaging in that, communicating that, uh, sharing that vision with people across Boone County. I'm here for the long haul. I'm Taylor Burks, I ask for your support for Hospital. All right, here we go. Um, as I said before, I think we're at a medical crossroads and that anything is possible. However, as far as the Boone Hospital, I'd like to see it as a, a, a unit by itself. However, uh, my third platform, which looks way into the future, is possibly having a medical co op that combines Boone and uh, the university for the citizens of Boone County. <laughs> I'm not running a conventional campaign. I have not formed a committee. I have not spent a cent. I have not collected a cent, and I don't intend to. My situation is totally different. I don't view myself as someone that's out there campaigning to serve on the board for the long term. At this point in my life, I can't make that commitment. But I think I can make a hell of a commitment to help make the best decision in this next year. If you think the involvement that I've had and the experience that I've had would be helpful in resolving this issue favorably, then I would ask you to vote for me. I think I bring some things to the board if you elect me that will both help the board and will also help the board join with the other medical institutions and organizations in Missouri, Columbia, Missouri, to create or make this health destinations more than a dream but a reality. I've worked in situations like this. I know how to facilitate the interaction of groups. Um, I think I can do this for this, uh, and I think I can um, help. I do believe that it is vitally important to keep Boone Hospital strong and a vibrant hospital that we can serve this community. I do look and, and think that I'm in a unique position that I've been there before. We've got outstanding employees, we've got an incredible medical staff, and I'm dedicated to working with all the different groups that, to ensure that the hospital remains strong for you. You're the citizens, you own the hospital, and we need to dedicate our time to make sure that it continues to be strong. Very good. 
Gentlemen, no matter the outcome, we thank you for running because we know it's a big commitment. So thank you so much. And we thank you. Thank you.